<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, I am not at Green Pastures Farm. I'm in Cumbria, New England. And uh, we just finished up with the Carbon Calling Conference. And uh, these are the organizers. And it was their dream to put this thing together. And I've got Nick here on the, this side and Liz. And I want you all both to give me a little background of what brought this conference about and what were you thinking when you put this together? Well, in 2018, not all 19, 19. We, went, 19, we went to Groundswell and we were just completely inspired by the vibe, the speakers, and we the thought, sofas. yeah, like the sofas, we love the sofas, <laughs> and we thought, wouldn't it be great, because Groundswell's, at then, it was very much arable-based, and we thought, wouldn't it be amazing to do a similar up north, because Groundswell's five hours, five, yep. six hours away from here, and uh, do similar up north with a livestock focus. Yes, and... You have a ton of livestock operators around here. Lots of sheep, cattle. Um, Cumbria is very much more irritable, but I got up in here, it's like, it's like, my gosh, the mountains. You got mountains in the view and all these stone fences. I don't know if I've been to a pretty, or, well, I know I haven't been to a pretty part of England. There it is, right there. <laughs> there it is, folks, right there. So tell me a little bit about the Carbon Calling Conference. I know you had me be a speaker this year, and. Yesterday, there were so many good speakers. What, what drew you all for the passion to put something like this together? I mean, um, so I suppose since, well, we were meant to host this in 2020 and we all know why we couldn't. Yep. Uh, so since then, we've been doing some Regen Ag chats. Okay. So me and Nick, uh, it's like a podcast type thing, can be found on YouTube. Um, and we've been interviewing some really inspirational farmers that we've known through just we've bumped into or we've met through Twitter or Instagram or something. And then that's put us in contact with the speakers that a lot of the people you saw yesterday we've done podcasts with in the past. And um, But generally, they're just great people, nice people, want to share their experiences with lots of different people around yep. the world. And, and all, all but one speaker, they were all working farmers, including yourself. Yep. Um, yep. So we had, uh, so all farmers, and then one lady from um, DEFRA, Janet Hughes, who's um, leading the big changes that we're having in this country. At the right. I think that's what really gives your conference a special feel, ladies, is was the uh, the farmer involvement. I mean, your speakers, they were, like you said, they were out here. A lot of them had some really hard upbringing years of getting their businesses off the ground. And as they got up there and basically emptied their hearts to us, you could almost feel like you're being drugged along on the journey with them, you know. The guy that had the pigs, yeah. he mudded up that that farm and then he figured you know i've got to have grass i've got to have grass yes. and and all of them have been doing all of them are very open and also really they've been to other places and learned from them so they're mm -hmm. really open to share with others and i think that's the key that they yes. they want to share their knowledge and they want to get but by doing that they also get knowledge back so it is a two-way conversation definitely right well you know I've, I've done a lot of conferences i've been around quite a bit and uh for you all, this is your first one, right? Yeah, that's why we look so tired. <laughs> Sorry, right. okay. I'm <laughs> telling you, a little tired. I'm telling you what, Lisa, and I'm just going to use a little bit of your time, but I, I wanted to give thanks and recognition to these two fine ladies for what they put on here and the comments that I got from the attendees yesterday. And I just got through with an all day workshop myself. And so my throat's a little bit sore, but I didn't want to leave here without. Him hard while he's been here. Well, I had a great workshop, by the way. The people that came back today, uh, they were very active in the conversation and they just seemed like they didn't, they couldn't learn enough. And at the end of the day, there was a really good question. I'll share it with you all. Well, you, Nick, you might have been sitting in on that, but the young guy from Scotland goes, well, Greg, if you landed in England today and you were handed a piece of ground, how would you start? <laughs> And I thought, boy, here's, you know, he's laying me this, this blank piece of land. So I just took off with it and I thought that was good, you know. So we went through a lot of things today and it felt good to, when you get participation from people. And yesterday, my goodness, every time you opened it up for questions, you were running around with a microphone. And yeah. the setting here, folks, is that a, this used to be an old auction. It's a great big old barn over here that you've made into it. I was talking to the owner's wife, and she said, you're out there at power spraying this thing, oh, yeah. cleaning up the, yeah, I mean, the work you all put in here now yeah. is unbelievable. Well, we did, to, get the, yeah, to, get, to get the first one under our belts, it's been quite hard. 
I've had a couple of sleepless nights. <laughs> and but, it's, but now we've done the first one, we hope to keep it rolling. But the, the key thing for us is a very farmer-led, farmer-to-farmer kind of knowledge exchange. Um, with, with atmosphere is yeah. important. So um, that relaxed atmosphere, yes. which allows people, they go, they're at ease. Yeah. And so they can ask questions and yep. feel that they can go and talk to anybody. And that's part of it. It doesn't, that's for me, is the important bit. Because we aren't professional and we aren't, we aren't particularly <laughs> slick. Well, you know what? <laughs> I thought you all did a man a fantastic job for what was always going on yesterday. I mean, for your first crack at it, I, I tell you what, y'all. To me, they say I shouldn't. If I'm in England, I shouldn't say you hit a home run. You hit a goalie because you're you're. <laughs> I feel like a goalie. Yeah, I had a guy tell me that on YouTube the other day. He said, "Great, you can't be saying home run when you're in Europe. You got to say you hit a goalie." Rounders. So. The equivalent for us would be you hit a rounders. You a hit rounder. a rounder. A rounder. A rounder. You hit a rounder. Now, what's a rounder? It's it's like a baseball. A, Ask the baseball. It? It's like a yeah. It's like baseball, but sim slightly simpler. Okay, cool. Well, I tell you, um, the countryside around this area, folks, is Cumbria. If you come to this conference, it's worth it just for the views. To me, mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable the the countryside and the, the beauty around here. And I think this is a great thing that you all are teaching farmers that live in the area that there may be a better way and you know farmers with all the input skyrocketing i mean there's going to be struggles ahead and so for you all to step out on a limb and you know be willing to sh bring people in to share their stories that's key and because we've got do you mean with subsidies going do you mean subsidies are reducing and will be gone within the next five years ish yeah so people it, this is with input prices and that people are really wanting to know how to change their systems. So yep. It's the right time, definitely. Yep. And, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest problems I've seen, I've traveled Europe, and I'm not just singling out England, it's in Germany, and even in Ireland, is outwintering animals. You know, you get a lot of rain here, and how do you keep an animal without putting him in the barn all winter and all that, and getting all that, you know, inputs in him? When you have to feed animals, and they can't feed themselves, uh, your prices go up, your, you know, the cost. So we talked about that today, and that's something that uh, I think there's a lot of... So a, my dog is just... Yeah, <laughs> hey, let's, let's get... No, let's get him in the video. This dog is cool, folks. Uh, yesterday... It's, not that, it's, 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 it's slightly dangerous, actually. Is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't go near him. doesn't like meth. Well, I tell you she, what. She's, she's not that bad. She's soft. Look. Yesterday we were clapping every time, and Liz had this dog by her feet, and every time people clapped, it barked. It barked. Not only did it bark, it barked a lot. But we want to say thank you to you too, Greg, because this this wouldn't have been what it is obviously without you. So those chaps, well, and girls who sat for six hours today in a concrete shed on very uncomfortable chairs, We've got to work on those. Um, <laughs> so my it's but by the very the end, they were still completely engaged. So that, they were. That's just a testament to you. So thank you. I think if I'd have still been talking, they wouldn't have left. No, wasn't. there wasn't anybody left. But my voice is where I need to stop talking. But I also <laughs> want to give one more plug to you guys. The, the food, the food you all served here, and the diversity of it was just magnificent. You had a cheese table out here by a local cheese producer. Called, uh, called, oh. called Trapenna, and they are in Wigton in Cumbria, and they're a young couple, and they're, they're, just, they're, they're quite new to cheese, and they've been it's amazing. I did a video with him yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so that I, I told him, I said, I got to do a video with you guys. I mean, their story is incredible. My yeah, absolutely. So, and I tasted their cheese. Their cheese is just ballpark wonderful, yeah. good stuff. So, anyway, folks, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thank you both, uh, Nick. And this Thank has been you. a, well, it's been an honor. And I've enjoyed myself. And uh, maybe. And your wife? Yeah, Jan. Jan. Yep. Delightful. Legend. Yep, yep. She's awesome too. Keeps you straight. She kept me straight all day today. She's uh, great. You got five minutes this break. It's lunch. You got to get back. I mean, she's she keeps me going. So that's awesome too. Thank you, Jan. I'm gonna sign off here, folks. On the way out, uh, hit that subscribe button if you would, and everyone be safe out there. Thank you.